is everything you need to know about the Jackery Explorer 5000 Plus. As a little disclaimer, I spent my own money on this, so this video is not sponsored by Jackery, and everything in this video is my own opinion. Let's get started. The Jackery Explorer 5000 weighs 130 pounds with a sleek modern design. It has solid casters on the rear and rotating casters on the front side with bricks for ease of portability. You're able to lay the battery down on the ground completely, but keep in mind that there has to be airflow on all sides in order to keep the battery at the correct temperature and its performance from degrading very fast. If you do happen to pick up the battery while it's sideways or on the ground, there is also a handle on the bottom side of the unit. And of course, on the top of the unit, there are two handles with a Jackery branding. Now let's get into the specs. This unit has a capacity of 5,040 watt hours. The Jackery Explorer 5000 Plus contains lithium ion phosphate batteries, which unlike regular lithium ion batteries, it can go up to a longer lifespan, up to 4,000 recharges or about 10 years of power with thermal stability and it's a lot safer. Now let's go over charging the battery. One way is through your traditional American outlet and taking up to 1,800 watts, which takes about three to five hours to get charged to full battery capacity. Another way to charge the battery is through the Jackery Smart Transfer Switch, which its intake is up to 3,800 watts, meaning that it will only take two to three and a half hours to charge up your battery to 100%. Alright, so we have the front of the Jackery Explorer 5000 Plus. So if you just press and hold this, it will power on the screen and the actual battery itself. So right here you can see the input, the current battery usage or capacity. So we're currently at 99% and output is set to 0 watts. There's also a Wi-Fi symbol. I don't think the camera shows it. But there's a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth symbol. So you're able to connect it to your Wi-Fi and monitor it anywhere around the world. You have your 12 volt DC car port rated for 10 amps. Right here on the right side, you have USB-C that maxes out at 100 watts, two ports. You also have two ports of USB-A, which maxes out at 18 watts right here. And you have your AC ports. So in order to turn it all on, you just press on the button and it'll power on. In order to turn it off, you just press on all of it. Now underneath output, it will show you like the amount of hours that it will take until it's depleted or like if it's on input, it'll tell you how many hours until it's 100%. Now right here on these AC ports, this is one, two, three, four. So if you go to the back side of the actual battery itself, it shows four buttons, which is four breakers. But really what's going on is that one and two is one breaker, three and four is another breaker. Individually, it goes up to 2,400 watt hours max. If you combine the two, so one and two, or three and four to together, it'll go up to 3,600 watts. If you need like 4,800 watts, I would rather plug in one through here, one plug through here, or the opposite, depending on how you are going to do it. Now the surge on all of these ports is up to 7,200 watts with pure sine wave power. Now let's go ahead and look on the sides. So right here you have the AC expansion port, which is what you would connect to your smart transfer switch. Now right here is your generator port. That's your AC 120 to 240 volt 30 amps. Right here is your NEMA 1040, I believe. So that's if it's going to be for a Tesla, uh, electrical vehicle, things like that. And right down here is your AC output reset, which is all of your breakers. So there's one, two, three, and four. It's not fully labeled, but you get the idea. If something trips, you just press on that right there and it'll go ahead and do that. And you can see that there's lots of ventilation going on right here. There's lots of stuff going on in the area. Planes, but yeah, there's stuff going on. on the other side, you also get lots of ventilation, but you also get this little DC input port. So what basically this is for is so you can switch in between high PV and low PV. So if you have solar panels on your roof and you have an inverter that you can put into, I forgot what this is called, but into these high PV MC connectors, um, you would just plug it into there, but then you would switch it from off to on so then you can actually get the power. Now if you have the little like panels from Jackery or Amazon, then you would put it in into the low PV port, which takes about 60 watts. So here you got your AC port, which takes three to five hours as a correction. Now under here is your DC expansion port because it takes about 5,040 watts of lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is actually a lot safer than lithium ion batteries, meaning that um, it's able to last longer up to 4,000 cycles, which is about 10 years. 
and if you do it for a day from 4 to 9 p.m. it does last six hours so if you do happen to expand your battery you just go through the DC expansion port you plug in another 5,000 watts or 3,000 watt depends on what you want to buy you can just attach it to here and it's able to expand your battery but um, I find that this battery is um, very unique so that's basically just all the ports now let's go with its portability. This does weigh about 130 pounds when you get it in person. It, it does look big on the picture when Jackery sends it out to people or even Costco. But it's actually like, like waist height. It's actually pretty small. It has casters on the front, which goes like in 360. It does have little brakes. So if you are ever worried when you get this plugged in into a transfer switch, you would I prefer to have it on brakes so then it's actually like grounded with the ground wire. Right here on the back it has regular wheels. I don't know how many inches that is. It looks like about six inches. I probably estimated it wrong but yeah. There's a handle on the back so that makes it easier to wheel around. Now if you are, if you do happen to think of putting this on the ground You definitely are able to. I just don't recommend it. Like, I don't know what the purpose for this is. Like, it's upright, it has wheels. I don't know why you would need it on the ground. That's my opinion. Um, so, if you ever happen to hold it while it's on the ground and you want to use the handle, well, you got a handle right here. I personally would never use this, but there's a handle. Then you just bring it back up and you can just wheel it around. Yeah. Okay, so for the setup process, I'll show you a screen recording from when I first did it. So when I was opening it up, you would see that there's no devices shown. We'll just say the word add. So you would click on add or even the plus sign here on the top right corner. Now there will be this thing that will be spinning around. So make sure you have your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on. Where it says available devices scan, you will go ahead and choose your Explorer 5000 Plus and it should exactly look like that. Now once you press on it, it will say bound successfully, do you want to connect to Wi-Fi? Then you would press on OK. So continuing throughout the process, then you would have to select your Wi-Fi network. It says that it has to be 2.4 gigahertz. I have a five gigahertz band one, but it should automatically switch over to two if the device needs it. So I'll go ahead and put in the login and get it connected. And then once you are connected, it will say configuration successfully. Now I'm opening up the actual app. So this is the actual battery itself. So right here is shown as the actual battery capacity. Right here will originally be in Celsius. So in order to fix that, you would press on the back button. You would press on me, then you press on temperature settings, then you click from Celsius, so originally it's going to be on Celsius, to Fahrenheit, then you click on the back arrow. So you click on the back arrow, then you press on me, then go back to home, then press on your battery again, and boom, it should be in Fahrenheit. Now when you are charging through the AC port, it will be shown right here on input, however many watts and however many hours it would take depending on what your capacity is already at. Right below that is your output. So by tapping on USB, AC, or DC, you are able to activate it. Then you can see how much volts and hertz is being used. You just press on it again and it will disable itself. The screen time, so basically on the little screen that's on the actual unit itself, it could be on for up to two hours, two minutes, or off. So for now, we will just press on off. Where it says generation and carbon reduction, if you tap on that, it's basically a little schedule thing. So if you have solar connected to it, it'll let you know how much solar was generated and stored. Let's go ahead and click on the settings icon on the very top right. So right here, it says scan to share devices. So if you press on that, it'll have a little QR code. So then you're able to share it with whoever it might be or whatever account. I did not play with it yet, but we'll see in the future. So right here it says edit device name. If you press on that, you are able to change the actual name of the device itself. So we'll go ahead and reset back this right here and press on okay. There we go. Right here we have charge settings. So right now it's set to fast charging mode, which says charge your device at full capacity. So we'll go from however much, so like 25% to 100% or 0% to 100%. The other option here is quiet charging mode. 
The noise during charging can be reduced to less than 30 decibels approximately, but the charging speed will be slower. So it'll be still fast, just not as fast as you think. And it'll be a little bit quieter. But in my opinion, I just leave it on fast because no matter what you do, it will always be quiet. It's not as loud as a gas generator. Here in battery settings, you can see that this fully used. Make the most of your battery. There's also battery saving mode. Extends battery life by approximately 30%. So if we click on, on battery savings mode, battery savings mode will limit power consumption and charge capacity. Okay. Then we are able to set, so stop some power supply, start charging and stop charging mode. So we will set this. How can we set this right here? Is it just automatic? Might be. But I can't move it. Yeah, so in battery saving mode, I can't move it, it seems like. But basically here in power, if it goes below 15%, it'll stop power supply. If it goes over 80%, um, it will, no, if it goes under 80%, it will start charging. If it goes over 85%, it will stop charging. That's what's going on. Currently I have it on full use, but we will keep it on battery saving mode at, at this time. Now right under that is UPS settings. So what I've heard is backup UPS mode is actually a lot better with its 20 millisecond uh, change over during a power outage rather than the zero millisecond one because the zero millisecond one takes about 20% on a regular day, which is not that good in my opinion. So basically under here where it says backup UPS mode, it says switching to power station supply within 20 millisecond during power outages only supports single phase output with total output equal to bypass mode output. Then on online UPS mode, it says switching to power station supply within zero milliseconds during power outages, only support single phase circuits, etc. Okay, let's click on back energy saving mode. So right here it says the device will turn off the output at no load or light load. So if you have a very light load or just no load at all, it will go ahead and shut off after 12 hours as low as two hours and as high as 24 hours or never turn off. Alrighty, so the next one is charging plan. So in here, you're able to set your peak hours. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say that our peak hours execute charging. Okay, so essentially at this point, it'll be after 9 p.m. So 21, five minutes after, that's now o'clock, all the way to 4 p.m., 654. 3.55, 55pm, okay, there you go, and you would press on OK. Device execution time will be synchronized to your current mobile phone time. So that's basically what it means. Currently it does not let me, but, you know, if it works, that's usually what would be happening right here. It usually works with a smart transfer switch. Hibernate auto off time, so if you press on that, it's as low as 2 hours, as high as never. So you can decide on that right there. So basically what that means is again, if there's a light load or no load at all, it will turn off within that time frame. Now the settings are a little bit more limited once it's connected to the smart transfer switch. So this is without it being connected to the smart transfer switch. Then you have your serial number, firmware updates, device specifications, and user manual. If you click on unbind, it will actually remove it from the account. And then you gotta reconnect it through either Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or whatever it might be or simply just the way that we did it originally. So that's what it looks like in the app. Now I do have the Jackery Smart Transfer switch right now, but I currently have to switch it from grid to battery through the peak hours of four to 9 p.m. manually. This is because whenever I press on the Internet of Things button, it doesn't actually want to bind to the app even though it shows up on my phone. Now this is a big issue. I've been contacting Jackery about this and how to fix it, but they honestly have not been helpful. Every time they said they would contact me in 24 hours, it's what they really mean is like three, five days after, which I, I can't understand why it's taking them that long. Because other people have been telling me that they got it solved with a beta app or a beta um, firmware update, so, something like that. But Jack, Jackery's customer support right now is being a really a big struggle, especially for me. Now I will make a video on a smart transfer switch once that's resolved, which won't probably be this month, maybe next month, we'll see. But um, if you find this video helpful about the battery, please make sure to let me know in the comments below your questions or check out this video right here or subscribe right here. I'll see you soon.